Howdy folks, we're back at it again with another Blender tutorial. And today we're going to uh, make a mountain. That sounds like fun. So we're going to open up Blender here. And uh, this is the default screen. And we're going to, the very first thing we're going to do here is, of course, go to Cycles Render. The third golden rule of Blender that I taught you last day. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and delete this cube here while in object mode. We have a completely flat grid to work on here. And I'm going to hit Shift A while in object mode, of course. Shift A to create a new mesh. And instead of creating a cube, I'm going to create a plane. A plane is completely two-dimensional, so it has no depth in the Z dimension, but that works for me. So think of it like a big sheet. And I'm gonna press S to scale that cube. And I'm gonna draw it out as pretty much as big as my canvas there. Okay, pay attention to the grid, make it work for you. Don't get too big and too small. Just try to take it to about as big as your entire grid there. Now I'm going to go into my edit mode, so pressing tab or going down to this menu over here. And then I'm going to go and subdivide the grid. I'm going to subdivide it maybe one more time. There we go. Lots of grid to play around with. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect it all. And then we have a big kind of big sheet. If we went back to object mode, you can see it just works like a big sheet here. I'm going to go to edit mode and we're going to play around with this to create a mountain out of nothing, out of a flat plane. The earth with its continental plates took millions of years to do what we're going to do in about two minutes. Okay, are you ready? So we're going to grab a vertex of this sheet here, this plane. I'm grabbing the vertex in vertex mode. The modes are down here. I'm actually going to grab a couple of vertexes and I'm going to press the G key to grab them. Well, those don't look like very good mountains. Even if I locked them to Z, they look pretty boring and plain here. It's not exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to teach you a new tool today, which is the proportional editing tool. So if I went in there and I pressed O, watch what happens to this bottom bar here when I press O. I guess nothing. Um, but there we go. That popped up that time. Uh, this one here where it pops up this little mountain like structure, and that is a proportional editing mode. If I go into that and I select smooth, and now I press G and lock it to the Z axis, it's a bit better. See how it grabs more of the uh, grid from around it? Now, if I use the mouse wheel to scale that up even bigger, then you can see now that it's grabbing different pieces of the mountain from all over the grid. I can go way up and make it sort of like a hill instead of a mountain, but I don't want to quite do that. I'm going to bring it back down with the mouse wheel, and I'm going to grab it till about there. Now I can select none of them by pressing A, come back here, and this one here, grab that one. Proportional editing is still on. I lock it to the z-axis, it's going to make that one slightly taller. I'm going to come in here, grab it with that z-axis, I'm going to shrink it down there. And I'm actually going to go over here and do the same thing. I'll make that one kind of big, sort of absorbs the other one there. You see I'm grabbing random vertices here. Grab want to give my mountain here a pretty good and then I'm going to make a mega mountain over here well, let's make it over here so now when I select multiple vertexes I'm going to go really big pull it up bigger there we go and then I'm going to make this part even bigger and sure why not this part right here I'm going to pull that in close so it's like a peak off to the side. Now, I don't like how that one sort of humped over sideways, so I'm going to go grab it and then restrict it to the Z axis. There we go. Now we have a sort of a cliff face going on. It's a pretty cool there. I can even go the opposite direction, make a little lake. 
it goes below my grid there come up here so I'll just go ahead and do that all over the place coming big and small with the proportional editing tool which allows you to use the mouse wheel to restrict the size of the pattern Ooh, that's cool look at that okay uh, so there we go and now I'm gonna treat this pretty cool it's not perfect still got a lot of flat areas I would come in and finish that but I'm just gonna teach you about one more thing here uh, we're going to select everything see everything selected we're still in edit mode here and then I'm gonna hit control T control T is gonna triangulate my grid which means it's going to turn all these squares into triangles instead. There we go. We've triangulated it. So now we have a grid of, of triangles instead. And then we are going to come in here to take a look. We'll go closer here. We'll shift over here. This peak is a little too regular. So we're going to come in here with um, changing our mode, proportional editing. We're going to go to random. And we're going to press G and we're ran. Now it's going to randomly pull up or down. Let's go big here. So, what that's going to do is it's going to make a kind of rugged look. The bigger I go, the more stuff is sort of randomly going to get drawn. It's going to make it a bit crazier. And I can go over here to where we have lots of round but still flat. And if I press G with the random, you see how lots of different stuff from everywhere comes up. I can make that a bit smaller depending on my mouse wheel. But there we go. That gives it a little bit more of a random look, which is pretty nice. Um, that's about all I'm going to show you in this tutorial. I'm going to do uh, materials next, but that might have to wait till another day. I'm just going to go back to um, my object mode. See, there we go. We have a, still have a grid underneath where we've made a little divot here. You can see the grid quite plainly. And I'm going to go W. Actually, I'm going to do that in edit mode. So go back to edit mode there. Press W, which is how you subdivide things. And I'm going to go uh, shade flat in there so that I can make sure everything's the same shading, which is going to help me material uh, put the materials or the colors in next. Um, which we'll do in the next tutorial. We have a little mountain scene there. That's all we're going to do today.